to the aggro side of things. I feel like the white aggro side of things, in terms of quantity, is currently fine, and could instead just benefit from having a little more variety and, and flavor to it, which is why I wanted to cut one of the more boring two drops that are not super exciting or a super high pick. I hear what you're saying. I think that Containment Priest isn't exactly an aggressive card for the white decks. I think it's much more of the utility slot. I also feel like white... I mean, let's... You know, yes, there's red decks, and they're aggressive, and they attack a lot, and Wall of Omen stops a lot of those decks. I think that the game is more engaging and interesting when, you know, two two twos facing off versus a 3-1 and an 0-4... Oh is not ex is never exciting. Like you're just kind of like Man. blocking something. See, now you sound like the Magic Online Cube designers right now. I'm I'm listening. Like, what's the problem? Uh, focusing too heavily on creature combat, as if that's like an important thing that you should give a shit about. It's going to happen regardless of whether or not you intentionally design for it and nerf other stuff. I mean, I think there are plenty of cubes, but you could design for no creature combat and engage. And I, Our I cube. Arcube is powerful enough with the aggressive decks that Wall of Omens is very important. All because right, all right, all right. So, again, like we had this conversation, I countered with Wall of Omens. You, how about are still, are still fighting hard for Wall of Omens? So I was like, all right, how about I have to kind of I kind of have to move up the curve at that point. So I'm looking at at, at higher casting cost guys. What about War Priest of Thune? Oh, there's uh, to me there just aren't enough two drops. I mean, if I if I, I think I, the really the weakest of all of them is is got to be whip quarter. Yeah, I mean nobody ever whips anything. It <laughs> it doesn't happen. Um, and and half I feel like half the reason whip quarter exists right now is because morph is making this little comeback. So you like you want to have the mental game a little bit and not have everyone instantly know what you played. Yeah, but that's still not good enough. So, it's Whip Quarter versus something up the ladder. And to me, it came down to, like, Soul of Theros or Angel of Serenity, uh, both of which I like. I, can I, like, I like every card. It's funny, it's weird to say this, but I like every card in white above three mana. Three mana and up. Like, Ranger of Eos is probably the one I like least. But all these, they're, these are all good. I don't want to cut any of these. You usually shit all over a Mary Angel, too. Oh, God, a Mary Angel's in cube. I forgot. Uh, See, the you, problem is, Eck, you need to look at visual spoiler. You shouldn't be looking at the list. I know. Um, yeah, cut a Mary Angel. Get that trash out of here. <laughs> so what you just said is false. <laughs> well, I didn't realize you, because you just added a Mary Angel back, despite my constant protesting. Uh, that card has been good, too, even after I put it back. Um, uh-huh, sure it has. Okay, so Whip Quarter versus... I, I, I really like Angel Serenity. I know it's like a bitch to cast. Uh, don't so cut Angel. A Angel is awesome. How about... Okay, so that's what I was like. All right, so Soul of Theros is like super no. mana intense. No, 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 no. Cut Emeria Angel or cut Whip Quarter. Don't cut anything I, I, else. I will, I will cut Whip Quarter. There we go. Thank the you. Morph, the morph game is offline, which probably, it, in reality, means it, it on a longer timeline. It was never really online. Let's be real. <laughs> I'm just saying, like that means cards like Jeering Instigator are more likely to go. Yeah. Because since that card only really works as a sorcery, you can't. It's harder to like leave a morph in play, and your opponent just casually walk around it. Slash not care about it. Slash not know what it is. I understand. So I mean, I, I, like at that point, it's like, well, can, can we just cut during Instigator? Not yet. Maybe we can leave Soul of Chandelar in the cube. Red actually has because it also has you know ball or uh, blistering fire cat. So uh, which one is it? Eh? Sure. Eh? I get, all right. I, I I guess there's that's what you tell Vin later when you're red gets red like, gets the morph game. Sure. I mean, if that's the case, I should really be putting Fortune Thief back in. <laughs> I, Fortune Thief is so great. I love Fortune Thief. I know. Um, so, the only other thing besides that that we were talking about were multiplayer leaving cards. This, leaving this conversation, the only thing you are full of rage over is not Treasure Cruise? Uh, uh, yeah, I just... 
I don't really care that much. Treasure Cruises, I think, is a lot worse than Dig Through Time in a Cube Environment. I agree. And I don't really care about Time Twister at all, and I don't think it's going to get played, so that change is irrelevant to me. Like, you could not make that change, and I wouldn't notice. Fair enough. I, I, I Again, I think there's plenty going on right here, and I think the conversation that we're going to... The longer conversation we're going to have before the next change, like for the beginning of the year, is really going to be a constriction and multicolor change. And and with that happening, I think a lot of the breath that would be wasted in, oh, this needs to become this and this needs to become that, is like we're just going to be cutting the bottom ten cards out of every color anyway. See, and it's weird. I, you know, I don't, I mean, and this is just a personal thing. I don't see why you want to constrict the cube again. I like it big. I like oh, it yeah. bigger. I like it big too. We've 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 covered this in shows in the past where more variance is better. I just think we get to a point now where trying to have plans, like trying to have interactions come together, could be so tough. It's like why bother? Like at that point, it's like fuck it. Don't play Wildfire. Don't play Oath of Druids. Don't even like. I guess you could leave like recurring Nightmare in, and there's this intrinsic value. But it's like anything that was a deck. Like why bother playing it in the cube? Just play. 800 good magic cards that don't need other no. cards to be good. That's, no, I think you're going to... You have a weirdly pessimistic outlook on this whole thing. Which is weird, because that's usually your job. I agree. Which is very, it's very strange. But that'll be a conversation for another day, because unfortunately we've already over two hours. Yes, and we cannot post things over two hours, so... I don't know what I'm going to do. I out the part where you did a song and dance while I was <laughs> disappeared. Dude, I gave an awesome soliloquy, are you kidding me? Um, so, anyway. I think this was this was a productive conversation as far as our own changes go. Sure. Oh, you yeah. Have, you, have, you have moved... Well, I, I have... Made ground on one card. Although I really like Jace's Ingenuity. I wish there was another. Like, fucking blue. Why do you have to be so good? I know, right? That's a very first world problem. Oh, well, I have too many good cards. Uh, yeah. But uh, we'll have plenty to go on for the next time we cast. And I would imagine we'll be cast. Although, who knows? Like, with the way sets are going to be released in the near future, the fact they're jamming these last two sets yeah. so close to each other. It's going all crazy. You know, the the world we live in is drastically changing here in a very short period of time. But there you have it. How many is that? 3, 5, 10, 14. Damn, that's a lot more cards than I was expecting this to change. Yeah, that's a good set. I mean, for, despite being really small, it had a lot of heavy hitters in it. <laughs> Yeah, and there's even again there. I feel there are there's still ones that other people are super interested in that we're not playing, um, but uh, I'm I'm happy with this. Yeah, there are a couple that I don't care for, but if I had a dollar for every time a cube change happened that had multiple cards I wasn't happy about, I could retire to Mexico for a a month. <laughs> yeah, a little longer than that. Anyway. So, just to wrap things up, I uh, want to thank everybody for tuning in and listening along. Uh, you can find me, when we're not recording, which is almost all the time, on Twitter, uh, at YoungMecca, Y-O-U-N-G-M-E-C-C-A. You can listen to us on iTunes, as well as from our website, which is ekamon.blogspot.com. You can download from that. Uh, YouTube, depending on where you're coming from, you'd follow me on Twitch. Mm. Any, yeah, anybody that uh, enjoys the work of Cedric Phillips, ironically, Eck has a ton of overlap there. So if you enjoy his shit, and he talks about magic every day, huh. uh, definitely give Eck a follow, because if there's anyone that's more knowledgeable about, about wrestling, it would be the guy you're listening to right now. Yeah, I mean, I definitely have him trumped on that front. And probably, oh, what, base wait, wait, probably what, baseball what? also. You're like two days away from uh, like WrestleMania tickets, right? Uh, Saturday, nine in the uh, morning. Sorry, four yeah. days away. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. I uh, so yeah, we're stamping tickets for that. Um, I've been playing standard and watching independent wrestling on a regular basis. It's been good. Uh, what do you think of all that BlizzCon coverage? Uh, that's not a topic for this 
this podcast, but the short version is uh, Blizzard is the number one company I think of when I realize my childhood is dead. Um, wow, that does sound like a much longer conversation. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, Overwatch is stupid looking garbage for babies. Um, okay, okay. I think I like what I'm hearing, because that's how I felt about Team Fortress 2 when I saw Team Fortress 2, and I'm, like, just enough older than you that I think that we're starting to align our viewpoints on well, how video games have happened. I mean, if that's how you felt about Team Fortress 2, it's how you should feel about Overwatch, because they're the same goddamn thing. I mean, I have, I'm, I'm, I'm at the zen point now where I see Overwatch and I feel nothing, because I haven't played a game like that in so You know long. what, you know what my initial reaction to that was? Was... I can't believe they designed an intellectual property explicitly to get a cartoon on Cartoon Network and a line of Skylanders, because that's what that felt like, was we're going to make action figures and have a cartoon. Cross-marketing, my friend. Yeah, it's It's fucking gross. That's what happens when video game companies have shareholders. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Well, that was was a good summation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's pretty much what I wanted to hear, because... Mm -hmm. I was only paying attention to anything from BlizzCon to try to learn more about the Hearthstone expansion. Instead, all I heard about was something called Overwatch. I hope you like RNG. I hope you like more randomness, because that's what you're getting. Uh, I I mean, yes, there's more randomness than I would have liked. I don't think it's as bad as some people on the internet have saying that I mean, this is the death of what would have been competitive Hearthstone because for, it's going to be 140 new cards that all have the word random on them. From what they've said, so they showed off like, what, 30 cards or something? And like 20 of them had random okay. effects? 45. I, it's, I saw some new ones today. There's it was a super sweet one. There's a 2-4 for 3 that if your opponent has 6 or more cards in hand, they yeah, have a yeah, yeah. So they said specifically that the demos and the initial showing of cards had almost all the RNG in the entire set because they're quote-unquote funner, according to Blizzard. Like, Blizzard thinks random effects are fun because they don't think people who are good at games should win all the time. They think that anyone should have a chance to win any game. Yeah, you should, like, Mad Bomber 3D your opponent's guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when random things go your way, it's great stories. So, like, all the BlizzCon, like, demo stations had all the RNG cards, but the rest of the set has basically none. So we've seen, like, all the random effects already, and we're not going to get a lot more, if any. Yeah, but to me, that's kind of positive, because I think that there's 140 new items. They've shown us 40. 30 of them have the word random on them. I'm good. I don't need any more. If they can hold to that, I don't think it's the end of the world. No. I was a little worried before they had said that, because I was like, oh, God, here we go. Nothing but coin flips as far as the eye can see. But anyway. Anyway, uh, in, in, in knowledgeable about other things, you should be following him on Twitter. You should be uh, checking in on his exciting stuff. I can be found uh, uh, on the internet as well. Definitely check out me on Twitter at Tristan Gregson. I am now part of the manager. He cut out there. He's part of the mana drain. We talk more about cubes since the guys have all caught the bug. Uh, but it is not the in-depth coverage and knowledge you will find from this fine resource, which is why we will continue to do what we do here, hopefully on a more than four times a year basis. Uh, I definitely think that come the holidays, I'll have a bit of a break. We'll try to organize some more rotisserie action, and I'd imagine we'll be coming back with some radical changes for the following year, he says with asterisk. Uh, (laughs) We're going to have to get together and hash this out in person. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking fifty card cut. That's what I'm thinking. thinking Man, that. that is a lot. It is a lot because there's so many babies, and I love all the babies. <laughs> I know. But when you cut like so, may, okay, maybe it's like a forty card cut because like we cut fifty monocolor cards and then we add back ten gold cards. What if we cut like a hundred cards and then add like fifty multicolor cards? You you. I just, I just watched uh, Paul last night again. You remember that movie? Yeah. Yeah. There was there was this great like I didn't you know, like you know usually when you see a movie so many times you don't laugh at a lot of the jokes because like they're old hacks. Mm-hmm. But I laughed super hard again when they were like, oh man, it was like you yeah, have the comic book cover with the chick with three tits. <laughs> like three tits, that's awesome. And then one of the other guys was like, why didn't you give her four? And then the, the uh, Jason Bateman's character to me like that's that's just sick. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> 
you've gone too far. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what I'm feeling about what you're saying right now. Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see if yeah. I can't. But until can't. then, uh, check out ekamon.blogspot.com. It has our complete cube list because it has links out to Cube Tutor as well as out to the spreadsheet, uh, which is where we do all of our tinkering. Uh, you can also find old episodes and great resources there. People uh, will talk to me about stuff, and I will usually direct them back to that resource. Again, if you've managed to find this podcast, or if you're one of the dozen people that are actually still watching us live, you know all this information already. So I will keep it short at that point and say, thanks again, everyone that tuned in this evening live. I know my technical difficulties did not help us. Uh, but we managed to have a fairly civil conversation that ran past the 90 minute marathon we had last time. So that is my sign off. Thank you. And have a good night, everybody. <laughs>